Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk a little bit about compiling Ceph. So this disk framework where you can build up a lot of different services in order to have an ever-growing disk if you just add more servers to it. So in this video we're going to be talking about the way of building it, things that you can do if you're building it on a Raspberry Pi, which I do, and things that you can do in order to build just parts of it. So if we jump over to my machine here, you can see that the build process is going. And this was started last weekend. So it has been going for at least a week and we are at 42% and it will take even longer <laughs> to get it done. Probably somewhere during the week or next weekend it will be done. And that's because I'm building it on a Raspberry Pi with one gigabyte of memory. So this is the older version, I think it's Raspberry Pi 3, which is very constrained device. And this is not something that I recommend that you do, but I wanted to test the limit. Can I run this on a Raspberry Pi with a little bit larger hard drive? Or is that impossible? So I'm trying to find where is the uh, possibilities of this software and building it on a Raspberry Pi which is an ARM process makes these files really large so some of the executables are actually a, a gigabytes in size which is really interesting so if we go back here and uh, jump out of the screen there so we see the actual build process so I'm using screen so it will not destroy the build process if I log out. So that's the screen software there in the works. So here we have the build directory. And if we go back down to the actual Ceph directory, this is uh, something I have checked out from Git. So it's available on GitHub. So you can find your Git repository on GitHub and check out the software from there. So you can get the master which is the latest version that they are building their software on now, or you can get a specific release and the releases are usually tagged and you can follow a branch if you want to follow a specific uh, development uh, branch. That's also something that you can do. So I think they have one branch for Octopus, one branch for Pacific, and I think they still are developing on the Luminous branch as well. So they are actually backporting some changes to older version, uh, which is really good if you want to run the latest changes for older versions. And why I have checked this out is I want to test new versions as they are released before they are actually packaged into the development uh, Debian system. But if you are running Ceph in your system, I recommend that you actually take the binaries that are built for your system. If you run a Red Hat server or Debian server, anything like that, wait for the packages to be available for your distribution. And when you want to update, use the package manager in order to update your packages to the latest version. Then you will get something that is performant, well built for that system and you will not have any problems. But if you want to try it out, not for production use, this is the way to go. So if you look here at my checkout, I'm trying to build 16.2.4, which is one release. If we look at the tags, I believe that was the latest tag that I could find yeah, so that's the latest version of 16 that is available. And you see also that I have a couple of files that I have changed. And these files that I have changed is the Debian control, and that's if you want to build Debian packages. Uh, do see make, and that is if you want to make changes uh, so you can build different uh, versions and you can change different uh, variable, variable flags there. And I also tried to fix the angular uh, issue that I had with the front end, but it actually ended up that I can't build the front end dashboard on this Raspberry Pi because 
running Node will take more than one gigabyte of memory. So building Node software on a constrained device is not something that I recommend. Uh, but at, to the building process, if we look at the repository here and we look at the readme, uh, there is actually good documentation on what to do. You need to check out the Git repository. You need to run the install dep uh, depths in order to get the dependencies. And then you do a make, cmake um, do. And that will create a build directory for you with the current dependent, with the installation that you can build. And then you can run make and make install. Uh, there is a flag. DC make build type release with deb info. So this is what we want to run if you want the uh, non-debug release. So remove debugging information. I had to do some changes when I first tried this out on this machine because it was running Raspbian. And Raspbian is a Debian version or a Debian clone, but it's not something that will say I'm a Debian host or a Ubuntu host or anything like that, you will say Raspbian. And if you go into the file install depths and search for uh, Ubuntu, for instance, Ubuntu, uh, there, Debian, Ubuntu, Duvian and Ele Elementary, these are the versions or ID releases that will build with the, the Debian dependencies. And if I wanted to do this on Raspbian, I would add Raspbian here. So that's, uh, that's how I would do, uh, do that in order to get the dependencies installed because the packages are the same. They are available. So I could run this on a Raspbian, but I needed to change that up. The same goes for do um, CMake. There should be a similar you can see here Fedora, CentOS, OpenSUSE, and if we look for Debian uh, or perhaps Ubuntu. Oh, it seems like it will take the default if none of these are true, which means that it can handle uh, Raspbian as well. So the build was not a problem. Uh, I remembered it to be a problem, but it is not. Another thing that I had to turn off, uh, so you see here that I add with args uh, rdma off. Uh, you can write that on the command line, but I didn't do it in this case. I put it in here. Uh, so that's something that you need to turn off if you're building on a constrained device. It will take more memory than uh, you have available. If you look at my history here, I actually have um, run the build process up here with CMake and you see that, that build type here. But the build that I build at the moment is without the uh, current front end. So I don't want the node front end. And I accomplished that by going into the build directory and then look at the file CMake cache. And in here, they have all the different parameters that is set when you create a build directory. So you can see there is a lot of different configurations. And if I search for front end here, and we have the dashboard front end langs, and we search again, you see here with manager dashboard front end boolean, and this is off. So what I did is added dash D with manager pro dashboard front end equals off when I ran my do make script, which turned this feature off. And I don't need the front end on this specific constrained device because I will not show the graphical fr uh, front end or anything of the manager. I will not even run a manager on this device. My main focus on this device is getting an OSD up and running if I can. And if not, I might run a monitor on it, but I will not run a manager. And uh, I could have disabled the manager as well if I like. So in here, you can find all the different flags you can turn on and off in order to build just some parts of 
your uh, environment. And as I said on a Raspbian, it takes weeks to build this. So turning these things are off is really good. If you're running on a normal PC or a normal Mac or anything like that, an M2, uh, M1 Mac, you probably will not turn anything off. But when you run this script, do CMake, it will look at your system and the install dependencies and what is available to it and build all the things that could be used on that system. So you can turn things off or you can just leave it as the script is um, set up. So that was all that I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you liked this video. Give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.